Hi all, I have another amazing game to show you from the TSAC Season 15 Super Final. So this is in round 39, Stockfish playing white against Leela. We have the opening book given the French defense, the winnower variation. So interesting imbalances out of this opening, white with the bishop pair. Uh, the structural damage though could be in black's favor later. Uh, so queen g4, black castles, Bishop d3, knight bc6, end of the book. Stockfish plays knight f3, Leela plays f5, which seems, uh, you know, king safety is a priority to shield this diagonal. Now, uh, Stockfish chose actually queen g3. There's an important historical stem game, e takes f6. You might think that's useful to keep the bishop uh, eyeing h7. Uh, there, so this historical game, Leboyevich against Belyavsky in Tilburg 1984, uh, ended up actually with uh, Belyavsky somehow getting the upper hand. So this is perhaps a model game in this variation. It shows that black doesn't have too much to fear sometimes. And in fact, there was a nice finish later. If I zoom to the final position, uh, so black had a clamp during the game on white's uh, attack, put the king in, in great safety, uh, then infiltrated later in great style actually. Uh, you can see c2 having to be nannied here as well is an issue in this whole opening but black managed to yeah, make way into the white position this is cr crushing uh, so it takes rook f1. So that was a, a historic important game the Boyevich Boyevsky with uh, e takes f6 but Stockfish plays queen g3 and you might have some cynicalism uh, about this. Uh, the bishop's blunted. Is the queen's kind of committed over here. Can black do something here? Well, Leela tries queen a5 after bishop d2, b6. And it seems a logical idea quite often to exchange off the light square bishops as well. And then sort of tap into these light squares later somehow. Or well, especially c4 or maybe even f5 later. If you can get rid of this bishop, sometimes that's a good idea. Uh, instead of b6, c takes d4 occurred in a game of Boris Spassky against Brunner in Selingen 1986. Boris Spassky with the white pieces actually uh, had a nice tactic in this game. Uh, as soon as that bishop a6 pouncing on e6 here, <clears throat> and now Bishop b4, knight takes h7, a fine tactic, celebrating this queen h4 check, uh, which hits e7, uh, pardon me, uh, hits e7, and well, let's just put it on the board, <laughs> easier, and then takes on e7, and yeah, he had a big position there. Uh, yeah, black can't take there because the bishop takes d8, it seems, uh, and managed to convert this, so... Uh, a classic Spassky game is getting a very strong attack on that G file here. So that uh, attacking player's pawn wedge in the center, it's it's great for the attacking player to sort of uh, build up attacks like this. And bishop takes G7, a nice tactical finish here. Uh, it seems very, very dangerous after queen D8. That looks to be uh, checkmating. Uh, so, so, yeah, interesting cultural heritage around uh, the opening here. So C takes D4 has been seen before. So Leela's B6 though. Uh, now we have A4. And now, uh, in fact, Leela releases that tension C4, which is often a bad idea because you're giving, in principle, the opponent often a free hand, often on the other side of the board. Uh, if Bishop A6 had been played, then actually white can pounce on the weakness of the last move, which is the neglect of, of e6 here, by playing knight g5. And after bishop takes, knight takes e6, threatens checkmate. Uh, in this position, white's getting a big advantage. Uh, so, and if we have a look at this again, on bishop c8, to change its mind, c4 actually hits the queen. That's pretty nasty. And this, this gets really nasty. <clears throat> as well where why again look this tactic against h7 and d4 uh, is is uh, very good for white alternatively if h6 had been played yeah taking here and this is very good for white 
So uh, c4, maybe you understand all that bishop a6 is not really working out. Uh, that release of, of tension. And now a, a sort of materialistic idea from Leela. It seems they've had some role reversal here. Leela's doing all this kind of principle breaking moves here in a way, releasing the tension, trying to win a pawn. And Stockfish is playing very dynamically, just uh, letting the a pawn go. Uh, but this does mean that this diagonal is pretty sensitive now for this dark square bishop to hop onto if needed. As well as this, this is also pretty dangerous. There are two <laughs> ways of this bishop being really quite dangerous. <clears throat> we have rook a2 just preparing to double against a4 here for the moment. Uh, bishop d7, h4, king h8, rook f a1. And actually that pawns let go with rook b8. Uh, it seems as though black has other issues in the position. He's not too concerned about letting the pawn go. And there's also a little trick involved here on white taking, which is employed after taking this rook b1 check. Uh, now, if this rook b1 check isn't played, say queen e8, white gets a dominating position. For example, with a rook going to a6, nullifying black's outside pass pawn. And white gets a kind of clamp here by putting the bishop. Just keeping it around is a great option with bishop c5. Initially on stockfish analysis, it was like thinking bishop takes e7. But this looks like a really fantastic bind without too much fuss. Uh, with you know knight f4 coming, it looks like an absolutely brilliant bind on the position. And then maybe even later, uh, the queen can get out of the way for g4. Um, so there, there are different ways of, of playing that. Uh, so uh, this deflection tactic used by Leela to exchange off a pair of rooks is interesting. And it looks at c2, and you might think that's good news. But now bishop g5 is played, and it's pretty critical for black already, this position. Knight g8 is tried. Uh, you might think, well, aren't there are numerous options here. The thing is, white does have definite attacking prospects. Fundamentally, this this uh, bishop without a counterpart. If rook b8, just just as an example, taking uh, that just loses a piece, so that's hopeless. If h6, in fact, white can play rook b7, plunging in uh, on the seventh rank, and just going for an attack like this is really quite crushing. Uh, this ends up white's uh, really doing well there. Or queen takes c2, you might think. Just the rook going to the seventh rank is really quite crushing. Uh, with knight g5 now threatening knight f7. It all works like clockwork for white here. After this, this is just overloading the black position, putting pieces on really awkward squares tactically. If king g8 to defend against knight f7, bishop h5, and the pain's not over here. After knight takes e6. Rook takes. Yeah, this is just very, very bad uh, end game wise. Uh, after taking here, this is just look, look at d5. It's just horrible. Yeah, white's uh, doing very well there. So queen takes c2 is insufficient. So uh, this passive looking knight g8 is played. Uh, and again, h5, just again, not caring about the c2 pawn. So, I mean, the rook coming to the seventh is play on both sides of the board here. We've got play on both sides of the board and with potential for h6 as well. Uh, it's very difficult for black to have any, any meaningful counterplay here. Uh, we have queen a6 being played. On h6, it turns out bishop f6 is plausible here. For example, this, so that's threatening queen g7. Uh, checkmate, so form form for stockfish there. Form form t shirt. <laughs> See the description. Um, knight takes queen g6, uh, rook b7. This this way, it's, it's just it just looks like a disaster. Well, it's actually got mechanisms like knight takes and queen f8 checkmate uh, as well. Uh, so that say that defending uh, f8 against this idea of knight takes and queen f8 checkmate, white can play knight takes e6, and it just gets nasty like this instead. Uh, as an example, yeah, black ends up shedding a ton of pawns uh, in this example here, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm taking it quite far. 
but yeah this it shows basically uh, how difficult the position is so I'm trying to show you here that uh, this Queen a6 so that was on G takes yeah this this is a very long sequence G takes doesn't seem to do too many favors for the black position uh, so anyway Queen a6 um, so h6 there's Bishop f6 so Queen a6 was tried and we have now h6 it's remarkable uh, what's about to uh, happen here uh, we have knight takes h6 and yet an, a remarkable conception here tactically um, is is calculated by by stockfish it appears it's um maybe it's not something even super gm attacking geniuses would really be able to calculate that easily stockfish is uh, you know hundreds of points fido wise above any human especially tactically and this this is a real like superhuman combination uh, white to play here what would you play in this position if I give you five seconds you might be able to guess the moves but probably not see all the massive possibilities that stockfish would have seen like millions of possibilities and variations in, a, in an instant but if you get the move you know 10 points <laughs> so white to play here Bishop f6 so we get this form pawn G takes E takes there were rumors that stockfish was testing the form pawn <laughs> from my influence so uh, threatening chat mates so this needs to be parried uh, the interesting thing about this position is also now after rook g8 knight g5 um, the whole mechanics is is truly quite fascinating uh, around this before we whiz past it um, if instead of g takes uh, let's let's imagine a uh, rook g8 instead then knight g5 takes e takes uh, we we get a similar position to the game actually now we might as well go on the game this 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 is similar to the game okay now there was something else no it's around here around here knight g5 let's go with this if it, it was if if this is one point though if queen h4 then knight f7 and you can see that the major white threats are extinguished and black's the one with a big advantage here no knight g5 no nothing so there's a difference between absolute zero and something it's a fine line here being trod trodden on but knight g5 is the way to do it clearly if stockfish played it rook g6 now here just to show the dangers if queen a2 then the rook go on that seven frank again taking on c2 this is just too slow after f7 and then we we'll just take there and knight takes h7 knight f6 this is uh, very nice for white just cashes out into a winning end game and in this line uh, you might think instead of queen takes e2 what, what happens on rook f8 it turns out queen h4 and this position with queen takes is uh, now threatening knight f7 check even if the rook moves knight f7 because then we're winning the queen Queen's got to be careful where it lands, not to be a tactical liability. Uh, so this is fascinating. So in the game we have 25 rook g6 on queen c8, queen h4. And here, this is also, it's not sufficient, it seems, for black. In fact, for example, like this. Uh, here, uh, also, on queen c8, yeah, f7 is not possible here because of rook takes g5 and black would be doing well there but uh, yeah queen h4 is the key move uh, on 25 queen a5 f7 and queen h4 and this position is actually queen takes h6 and we're fretting knight takes h7 and queen f8 chat mating if king g8 knight takes and then the rook comes to the seventh white's got a big advantage there uh so yeah it's it's all pretty interesting uh, after knight g5 so rook g6 was played queen d6 it's 
kind of remarkable stuff. Okay, the bishops attack. That's that's one of the obvious things to point out here, and Lila kind of defends that bishop. On rook takes g5, queen takes, and then check, and then that knight drops, and then this is just horrible onto f7, because now uh, yeah, there's a threat of f8 as well as f takes g8, and so white ends up with a great position there. Uh, here, if rook g6, rook b7, and black would have to give up the queen, and this is just horrible for black as well. I'm losing material, for example, like that as well is likely. So uh, queen c8, so it's a bit grovelly. So stockfish sacrificing a piece for this position, and this dangerous form pawn on f6. Gasparov said pawns around the opponent's king are like worth pieces in their own right attacking pieces. Uh, and we have another brilliant move from Stockfish celebrating the form pawn <laughs> uh, and Black's general overloading in this position. Can you guess why it's playing here if I give you five seconds? Okay, Rook b7, mega tactics. Basically, uh, so what is this about? It's putting in even more pressure now on black's position that's taken if uh, it wasn't bishop e8 then that interrupts the first rank so queen f8 check and then rook takes h7 is mate uh here uh obviously knight b8 well not obviously but i'll point it out rook takes b8 winning pinning the queen uh so queen takes b7 was played and then we have check and now uh rook g8 on knight g8, there's knight f7 checkmate. So rook g8 is fairly forced. And then we have queen takes h6, threatening checkmate. We have bishop e8 being played to defend that laterally. On rook takes g5, it turns out here that f7 is super strong. Uh, not just threatening to queen, but also check and then mate with the queen. So check, for example. Here, taking is strong here, uh, even stronger than f8, believe it or not, because it has the threat of queen f6 mate, mating. Uh, so, for example, here, queen h6, threatening f8, and that's crashing through. But uh, in this line, yeah, just to put some aesthetic stuff on the board, queen f8, check, and then queening checkmate. So yeah, really dangerous position with that form pawn. Bishop e8 is is tried, uh, but now it runs into f7 interruption tactic. So if bishop takes, queen takes his mate. So black has to give up the queen. Um, on um, rook g7, queening there. Uh, so it's it's pretty horrible. Uh, there's nothing really uh, to be done there. Uh, on <laughs> yeah so the queen's given up and stockfish ever incisive plays now bishop h5 this is the most incisive move and in fact doesn't even recapture here but plays queen takes e6 and black's getting really dismantled after this three pieces are in disarray in this position and it looks as though hung on the, isn't the g file uh, dangerous here, uh, white could have played queen takes h5, uh, and black might have some resistance there. But this way of playing it is really interesting. Queen takes e6, so three pieces for the queen. But the knight's actually just left there with bishop f3. On knight a5, it doesn't really do black favors after queen takes f5. Uh, and now queen takes d5 where is this knight actually going it's kind of stranded this poor knight is stranded uh so this is just horrible uh, knight b3 is pretty desperate check just take and then easily handling this pawn if it ever steps forward so uh that's just winning for white so bishop f3 was tried check 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 now taking on c6 bishop takes g2 on rook takes g2 uh check this is harmless really after check 
and the king goes to d2 mostly harmless so bishop takes g2 check 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 queen f4 uh, okay the only thing Leila's got left is that outside past pawn to play with but uh, it's not really enough uh, white's making progress over here still is another fallish pawn uh, takes that pawn there and the king starts marching up and around here the game is ended here both engines think it, uh, for more than 10 ply it's been plus 10 so yep Lena kind of auto resigning there uh, a possible game continuation here is uh, check f7 is, is just uh, crashing through and the king can help checkmate I'll take you to the game end to get well that's pretty aesthetic but king h7 so I think this game really demonstrated Stockfish's huge strengths in tactical positions um, there were a kind of attacking points on both sides of the board um, the bishop without a counterpart plays a huge role the central pawn wedge uh, really are attacking players friends both of those elements uh, the tactical player kind of kind of relish and celebrate stuff like that especially pawns around the king the fawnish pawns uh, there to cause trouble fawn in the side uh, yeah I just think it was the more you look at this sort of game and try and analyze it the more you see the uh, the wealth of sort of sub tactical puzzles actually so I put those in the puzzle book at chess World. so if you enjoyed this game video please click, click on the top left box which should appear shortly become a member at chessworld.net play against other youtubers and test yourself on the variations covered in these and other game videos from the improved menu the puzzle box option that has a link to the annotated game comments questions donations see the description like share subscribe with the notification bell really appreciated thanks very much puzzle book addendum 42 puzzles generated basically out of that game some of them a bit more arbitrary than others but nevertheless quite interesting to check out especially if you apply these filters so this is the improved menu of chessboard.net puzzle books uh, so here white play for a clear advantage I think it's the pouncing on on the weakness of the last move here and then we can play knight takes e6 and not bothering recapturing their threatening checkmate instead and now uh, taking with Queen uh, so here uh, that's that was a double attack on h7 and d4 I think we could just take that thing here or oh, we'll just cancel okay just cancel I think the damage has been done there uh, so uh, here I think g5 rings a bell <laughs> uh, I, th I think we can just take on a7 here yeah there's a lot of pressure on black's position clear advantage here I think we just take there because that's a weakness of the last move overload um, knight f7 fork there in that variation with the the rook on the seventh caused rook d8 tactical disasters abound uh, so here I think just uh, oh, queen takes and then how to uh, improve there oh, I don't know queen g5 okay Oh, that was that was just hitting the rook. Oh, that's the point. It's an overload again. Just take the rook. Yeah, the rook can't move without losing the bishop. Uh, yeah, I think we just take the bishop there. Here, I think. Uh, actually, I'm not sure. Immediately, uh, what happens here? Something nasty. Anyway, I think you get the gist. I'll just do the first ten. Uh, what's the hint here? Knight f8. All right, then knight takes. No, not knight takes. Oh, because f 8s covered. It's not that. Rook takes. Maybe rook takes. Hint. Knight takes. Okay, just just two more. Don't want to make this video too long. And now uh, here, I think. Can we take that to take here? last one here uh, so check this out yourself though there's lots of uh, situations to check out uh, black to play for clear advantage here 
I think knight f7 suppresses white's major threats if white had played like that. All right, yeah, so um, also uh, uh, let me just mention uh, the famous player section has been added to all the time at the moment. So we've got Paul Morphy recently, the most recent addition there. So that's very popular as well. Mikhail Tell uh, sacrifices and nice game finishes. The Magician from R Riga to check out. Okay, thanks very much.